Hello, everybody. This is uh, Ron Dittmars talking to you from the Erasmus Academy Recording Studios uh, in Brooklyn, New York. And this is our second segment on the uh, early church uh, theologian origin. And our guest speaker today is uh, Chad. Chad, you want to say hello? How's it going, Ron? Great, great. Okay. Here's an image uh, of uh, a title image there. It says 200 to 253. His dates are really 184 to 253. Maybe this was just maybe the, the period of his writing. Uh, that's one image. And then there's um, another that I wanted to show you. Here's one uh, origin of Alexandria and the study of scripture among the early Christians. So these are some of the uh, early uh, church theologians. Uh, looks like some of them from the, the Cappadocian from the third and fourth centuries with origin in the, in the background as their teacher. Okay, so um, great. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at this text now that starts with uh, Der Verteidiger. Uh, you see it's slightly slanted, so don't worry about that. Um, okay, can you see my mark here, Chad? Yes. Okay. Same process as before. I'll just read aloud and Chad will repeat after me and please read with him to get a, a sense of the feel and to participate in this session. And then uh, I'll ask him questions. Try to imagine in your own minds what the answer is as we piece together how uh, to construe uh, the meaning of these sentences. Okay. Uh, going on. Or starting. Uh, der Verteidiger der kirchlichen Lehre würde wohl sehr staunen. Everybody? Der Verteidiger der kirchlichen Lehre würde wohl sehr staunen, wenn man ihm erzählte, wenn man ihm erzählte, er habe überall von den Ketzern, die er bekämpfte, er habe überall von den Ketz Ketzern, die er bekämpfte, gelernt. Gelernt. I guess we did the last. Und doch ist dies der Fall. Und doch ist dies der Fall. Okay, quite a long sentence, but uh, not too hard. Up to the comma, where's the verb complex? Uh, should be, uh, I think, würde staunen. Good, and that means? Um, give us, giving it us, would giving, giving, amaze? Yeah, uh, you, as a pronoun, you could say he. He would, no, he would, be, he would be amazed. amazed. And the subject is? Um, Verteidiger. Yeah, so this means the defender, and obviously I think referring to um, origin, the defender of of uh, ecclesiastical doctrine or church doctrine would certainly be very amazed. And then going on, wenn man ihm erzählte. Now uh, up to the comma, where's the verb? Erzählte. Good. So he told if and where's the subject? Uh, this, it would be Mon. Mon is, uh, is that Thomas Mon? No, not exactly. No, okay, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, when, always the impersonal. If one, and this is automatically the subject, if one would tell him. Now, notice here, um, uh, what what mood is this? Because Haba goes with uh, um, Gallant. Uh, it's right. third person singular. So, so what, is that uh, indicative or subjunctive or? Well, no, because it's uh, the subject is air, so you would expect it to be hot. So exactly. now that since it's haba, then you're going to identify it as the subjunctive. Perfect. Okay, so you have the subjunctive on this side of the comma, and this is a uh, past tense, which also can serve as the subjunctive. The subjunctive is based on uh, two different ways, either the past tense of the verb or the present tense with these uh, changes in the auxiliary. Um, auxiliaries. So you have here, so you would say, if one would tell him, you would, should have would because you have the subjunctive on the other side. And remember subjunctive in German is used for anything that's hypothetical, supposed, conjectural, uh, indirect discourse, you're reporting something that someone else says. Mm. Um, so instead of just 100% uh, direct fact that someone is, is uh, um, stating. Okay, so if one would tell him, and then where's your verb uh, after the come here? After after gelernt? Yeah, no, after erzählte. Oh, sorry. Uh, habe gelernt. Yeah, I guess we identified that. That he has learned, um, uh, in all cases, überall von, von the uh, von den, from the heretics. And then what does the D refer back to in this uh, relative clause here, starting with D? Um, I believe it goes back to Ketzern. Yeah, the the heretics um, who 
he uh, fought, bekämpfte. Uh, and going on, und doch ist dies der Fall, everybody? Mm -hmm. Und doch ist dies der Fall. Verb is, obviously. Ist. And the subject is? Uh, dies, I believe. Yeah, and this is a slightly colloquial, this very formal writing you would always have, dieses. So dies is a written in place of, of dieses, and yet this is the case. Good. Uh, so quite a long sentence. Uh, you want to just translate the whole sentence and go slowly so we can follow along with you? Um, yes. Chad? Okay. Uh, the defender of church doctrine would certainly be very amazed, I suppose, mm -hmm. um, if one were to tell him uh, that he has learned um, everywhere from the heretics mm -hmm. Um, which he fought or battled against, I suppose, um, and yet this is the case. Perfect, yeah. I would just say, uh, D, you would say whom he... Whom, yes. Because you're referring to people there. Y and yet this is the case. Very nicely translated. Okay, going on. Volhatman, everybody? <clears throat> Volhatman. Let's see. Uh, of den positiven Einfluss des Gnosticismus auf Origenes Denken überschätzt. Go ahead. Uh, wo hat man oft den positiven Einfluss des uh, Gnosticismus auf Origenes Denken überschätzt? Good. Okay. A lot. Uh, very well pronounced. Okay. So, uh, let's see. Uh, where's the verb complex in that whole, what you just read? Okay. Uh, so, it's hot, and mm -hmm. then I think uh, überschätzt. Good. Good. Überschätzen means to estimate or overestimate. So how would you translate the verb complex with a pronoun? Um, he has overestimated. Perfect. And where's your subject? Um, always going to be mon. Good. Okay. So here, and, and since you have an adverb here, vol, it reverses the um, the hot and the and the subject here, mon. So mm -hmm. certainly one has um, overestimated. And then where's your direct object? Uh, it's going to be Einfluss. Mm -hmm. This whole thing here, then then positive and Einfluss. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, so your how would you just read the core sentence? Sure. Uh, hat man den positiven Einfluss überschätzt. Perfect. Once you have the core, you can everything else falls into place. So certainly one has often, you're picking this up, has often overestimated the positive influence, and then this is a genitive of Gnosticism. Gnosticism of origins. Now here we have another Denken. So how, how do we uh, construe that? Uh, it should be like a gerund, thinking. Mm -hmm. So any infinitive made into a noun uh, results in a gerund, so with an ing word. Um, going on, aber eine steht fest. Aber eine steht fest. Es war der Kampf gegen die Gnostiker. Es war der Kampf gegen die, die Gnostiker. Let's go there. Uh, where's the verb here? And up to the con up to the colon. Okay, I think it's uh, state fest. Good. So it stands fest, or or it, it is certain, you could say. Uh, but one thing remains certain. Mm -hmm. uh, is one way to to express that. Going on, es war. Here's your verb var. Um, the kampf gegen against the Gnostics. Now, uh, what does the dare refer? What is its antecedent of dare? Oh, uh, that's going to go back to Kampf, Great. der Kampf. Yeah, so oftentimes you would be inclined to think that the last word would be the antecedent of this relative pronoun. But you, you have to remember that der means that the antecedent has to be masculine singular. So, And this is plural, so this cannot be the, the antecedent. So it goes all the way back to Kampf, der Kampf. <clears throat> so it was the... Probably the, also separated out the, part, the um, prepositional phrase that would help you. Mm-hmm to know that that wasn't the Gnostics word. Yeah, this is in a prepositional phrase, so that so the antecedent really, although it can be there. there. Uh, yeah. So it was the, the struggle against the Gnostics, which, um, and then this is from Zwingen. Is, is this a strong verb or a, or a weak verb? It's, it's strong. So the infinitive is Zwingen, to force or to compel, which, uh, the, the struggle which forced him to that, and then let's go on. Die Philosophie zu studieren, everybody. Die Philosophie zu, uh, zu studieren. 
um die Gegner mit ihren eigenen Waffen schlagen zu können. Um die Gegner mit ihren eigenen Waffen schlagen zu können. So, let's go back here. Which, which forced, which compelled him to that reason. These da actually uh, serve to anticipate what's coming next. So, forced, compelled him to that, to do what? Then you have that found in the, to do what? To study mm -hmm. philosophy. Mm -hmm. And then what does um zu mean? Uh, in order to. Good. In order to... And, and where's your verb complex there in that whole, and from um to the end? Uh, schlagen zu können. What does that mean? Um, I think to to be able to battle or to be able to strike. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to be able to strike and direct object is? Uh, die Gegner. Good, okay, the, the opponents. All right, good. Um, let's see, this is a really nice passage. You wanna just read the whole thing through uh, slowly? Um, um, sure, let's see. We're starting from, from, from Vol Hot. From the, oh, uh, okay. I don't think we've actually translated that part yet. Okay, let's go from Vol Hot. Okay. Um, although one has um, often over overestimated the positive influence of Gnosticism on Origen's thinking, mm -hmm. um, it stands fast or firm, however. Um, he was, or, or, sorry, or it, it was. was the, yes, it was the, the battle against the Gnostics, um, which forced him to that, and that being, uh, to, to study philosophy in order to be able to strike uh, the opponents with their own weapons. Perfect. Really nicely done. That's great. This is a really nice uh, passage. It's very well written, very clear. So um, it's, it's uh, enjoyable to read through that. Okay. Uh, thanks so much. Um, thanks for tuning in and talk to you later. Bye-bye.